What's up everybody? Hope you guys are having an amazing day. There is a lot that needs to be talked about, so let's go. First thing I want to talk about is congrats to the Eagles and winning the Super Bowl 52 and beating the Patriots. Patriots fans, ha ha. Yeah, I know, but still, my team didn't make it to the, to the finals either, so it's all good. But congrats to you guys on winning the Super Bowl 52. There were a lot going on there. There was a lot of good commercials like Ty, Doritos versus Mountain Dew. I've watched that commercial like 20 times already, and I just love it. Uh, Jeep, Amazon, and so much more. Pink did an amazing job singing the national anthem, whereas Justin Timberlake, halftime performance, it was good, except there was a few things that was off. If you watch around, you know, people were talking about how they're surprised that Justin Timberlake was allowed to perform halftime performance after what happened in 2004 with him and Janet Jackson. Uh, Pete, the crowd outside, like people sitting in the stands and everything, they were just silent while the people who were on the field were having the time of their lives. And he had a tribute to Prince and, you know, most people, you know, they figured, you know, Prince would love that. But even though Prince isn't here with us, you know, RIP, uh, there was an interview a few years ago with Prince. He just didn't like that kind of thing. You know, he, he thought that was like demonic in some way. And so it was kind of who knows what was going on and everything else along the way. And then you got the kid who Justin Timberlake was next to. And the kid was like, what do I do? What do I do? And then he became a meme. People were trying to, you know, make it fun of him. Like, oh, he was trying to look up on Google, like, who is Justin Timberlake, that kind of thing. And he, he looked like he had a lot of fun and everything along the way. But after the celebration, I just got to ask, what the hell? <laughs> y'all trashed your city. I mean, I know you won and everything, but damn. Y'all like Tasmanian devils just like running amok out in the city and just, it was just so much. If you, I know if you win, the Super Bowl, calm the hell down. Just be like, hey, we gonna celebrate. Just don't destroy the whole city, you know, climbing up on, like, the light poles and everything, destroying stoplights and everything on the way. But just have fun and don't make a chaos scene. Otherwise, you're gonna be known as a Tasmanian Devils for some reason. <laughs> Second thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the Olympics. I'm ready for the Olympics. The Winter Olympics are coming this weekend. The open ceremony is this Friday, and I am going to be watching it nonstop because I love watching the Olympics for the winter, for the summer. I love watching the World Cup for FIFA. I'm a big sports fan, so I just love watching everything. And there's going to be a lot going on because, you know, it's going to be in North Korea this year. And, you know, so many teams are going to be out there. When I say teams, you know what I mean. Except for Russia. They will not be there because they were found out on doping. Yet, for some reason, I think they're still going to be there to, you know, watch and everything on the way. But you guys won't be able to, to represent your team. So, sucks for you, you know. That's what you get for doing all that idiotic stuff. Uh, but, you know, there's I'm, I'm excited for Team USA and Team, like, Japan, Team Australia. All these teams, I'm just excited no matter what. I, I wish I was there to get the experience of... Like, seeing all this going on, taking photos and whatnot. But, you know, watching it from the comfort of my house, that's also doable as well. So, that's a really good thing. But, go Team USA. Go Team USA. Go Team USA. Woo-woo. Woo-woo. Guys, this last story I'm going to talk to you about is really messed up and fucked up in so many ways. There is an 18-year-old young lady by the name of Anna. She, uh, she was born in South Brooklyn, and she spent many nights... Uh, driving around the city with her friends and everything along the way. And on one night, on September 15, 2017, sometime between 7.30 p.m. and 8 p.m., she crossed paths with cops. Now, she was in a parked car with her two friends when a gray charcoal van pulled up and flashed its beams, monetarily blinded her. Now, in, when, in the car, I'm sorry, in the van, there were two police officers, both of them plainclothes detectives, and they were over six feet tall and powerfully built. They were flashing the badges and everything along the way and asking questions about what they were doing. When they were asking questions, they saw that they had weed in a front cup holder. And soon the detectives ordered all three of the, the occupants to get out the car. Anna recalled that uh, the detectives cuffed her and told her friends, both young men, that they were free to go. Later on, she said that 
they led her to a slender woman who was just over five feet tall and to the back of an unmarked, un, of an unmarked police van with tinted windows. Now, inside is where it gets fucked up. Inside, Anna said that detectives took turns raping her in the backseat of the van while they cruised around the dark streets and as she was handcuffed and she was crying and repeatedly telling the officers no. Between the assaults, she said, the van pulled over and the cops would switch drivers every now and then. And then later, an hour, she, uh, they, you know, a few minutes drive, the detective dropped her off on the side of the road a quarter mile from the police station as surveillance shows. And she stood on the sidewalk with her arms around her chest, looking up and down uh, the, the alleys and everything on the way. And she's pacing around until she gets a cell phone from somebody so she can call a friend. People, the cops made no arrests, issued no citation, filed no paperwork on this stop. Hours later, Anna, her mother, went to the hospital and Anna told the nurses that two detectives sexually assaulted her. And this was according to the records. And semen collected in Anna's rape kit showed the DNA of detectives Eddie Martins, 37, and Richard Hall, 33, of the Brooklyn South Narcotics Unit. And both have recently resigned from the force and been charged with rape. Now, along with this, Anna just assumed that in a simple case, two cops had sex with a woman in her custody in the middle of their shift. Hmm, I don't know about that. Because someone asked about her, uh, somebody asked about this on a Facebook post and said, is there enough evidence to prove this? And she said, listen, man, it doesn't fucking matter if they're on, the, they're on duty. Police officers, it's a fucking violation and they are... They are the people we call to, to be help to help us and not to be fucked by. And she didn't know this, and I didn't know this as well. But apparently, there is a law that that states that it is illegal. There actually, there is no law that states that it is illegal for a police officer or a sheriff deputy in the field to have sex with someone in their custody. And it is actually one of 35 states armed with law enforcement officers that can evade sexual assault charges by claiming that it is such an encounter from groping to intercourse was consensual. People, this is an actual thing. And yet, we deal with this every fucking single day. And now, many recent years, uh, some states have, you know, closed this loophole, applying to cops that have the same rules applied in place nationwide for probation officers and prison and jail guards. Oregon did it in 2005, Alaska did it in 2013, and Arizona did it in 2015. Now, most have not, particularly because few people realize that loopholes exist and partly because it has been somewhat unpopular to push laws that target cops and anger their powerful unions and when this kept going on you know found out and everything else along the way on october 26 new york city council member mark traeger announced that the teen store had inspired him to propose a bill to make it illegal for police officers to have sex with anyone in their custodies he said our laws regarding sexual consent must be brought into line with basic common sense empathy and human decency now, Anna, she is the daughter of a Russian immigrant. She's atten she attends a racially diverse public high school. She owns an impressive collection of Air Jordans, and she wants to be a paralegal one day. Now, she, she basically, she maintains her routine going on and on. You know, she goes to the occasional house party, her music show. She likes to hang out with friends. She posts her selfies and everything along the way. But on October 5th, Two weeks after she talked about the whole rape, she was ticketed for weed possession. Again, like I said earlier, the cops made no arrests, they issued no citation, and they filed no paperwork on this. That shows how fucked up it is. And on that same day, that's when the whole Harvey Weinstein case came out on how he sexually assaulted so many women. And, you know... Going on with this and everything, the following day, uh, the Brooklyn District Attorney of, uh, filed charges of rape, kidnapping, 
bribery, and official misconduct between against Martins and Hall, who face up to 25 years in prison. And when Anna found out about this, she was so happy. She said, God bless. And on November the 6th, that's when Martins and Hall resigned from the NYPD. But that's that's, that's sort of messed up because you, you do all this and then you want to resign because you know people are going to find out. Okay. People, she is still dealing with this. And she still has to go to court and everything with these guys. And the legal requires the legal process requires her to tell every single detail every time. She's been dealing with this for the past five months. She's given statements on a series of uh, to a series of NYPD investigators, to her lawyer, to her prosecutors, to a grand jury, and to attorneys representing the city for her lawsuit against the department. Wake the hell up, people. If we look at that picture one more time of all 35 states, that is so fucked up. We should not be dealing with this. We should not even be having this. There should be a law on this shit. Trump, you say you want to be a great president? Get to doing it. I, for one, I'm just super and utterly pissed off about this. Having family in the police, the police have police force, you know, it's just, you know, it's unbearable to even hear about this. And I know that they they won't even be a part of that. I know they are good cops. And so, if you are a cop, you should be the same as well. Don't try to BS your way into being the person you are. Actually do your job. Make sure you're out there protecting people, making sure that everyone is safe. That is my statement on this. But I want to know what everybody else thinks about this. I want you guys to tell me what is on your mind about the Super Bowl. What do you guys think about, like... Are you ready for the Winter Olympics about Elon Musk? And let me know also on this because this is the main thing I want everyone to tell me about this. Okay? Like, share, comment, subscribe. Let people know I'm out there for y'all. I love y'all no matter what. If you hate me, guess what? It's okay. I'm going to brush it off. But with that being said, I hope you guys have a lovely day. Peace out.